St. Louis history. Let's learn a little bit about it. This view is from the Gateway Arch. It gives phenomenal views, but you've got to take the tram ride. Let's look at some old world buildings in St. Louis. It's part of St. Louis history. Travel across America with me. We're at Rue de la Tour and Rue de Grand. Are we in France? No, we're in St. Louis. It has a heavy French influence. La Rue de Grange, Barn Street or Third Street, farthest from the river, formed the western boundary of the town. It's part of the Creole Colonial Corridor. And what's this basilica? The old cathedral museum was closed the day we visited, but we were able to go into the 1834 church. It's the Basilica of St. Louis King. The old cathedral established in 1770 and it was constructed in 1834. Let's go in. There are public hours and there are mass times. It's a beautiful structure. The interior is elaborate and I love the color, don't you? Please close the door behind you. Thank you. The historic restoration occurred in 2014. There are lots of plaques out on the exterior and look at the arch behind it. Isn't that just cool? The old cathedral in front of you is the first Roman Catholic cathedral west of the Mississippi River and the fourth church building to stand on this site. Completed in 1834, it was a hub of Catholic expansion in the West in the mid to late 1800s. American Indians visited here and missionaries traveled westward from here. Between 1826 and 1843, the Archdiocese of St. Louis included much of the land between the Mississippi River and the Pacific Ocean. The Roman Catholic Church has owned this site since the founding of St. Louis in 1764. The old cathedral is the oldest surviving building on the waterfront and is still an active perish. And there's lots of ways to get around. Please subscribe to my channel. We walk, but you can get one of these scooters. We found a couple of them on the sidewalk. Now let's go to the old courthouse. It was built in 1839 and remodeled in 1862. As a community crossroads, the St. Louis Courthouse was the setting of the pivotal Dred Scott case in the 1840s and 1850s. It has a cast iron dome. And speaking of domes, have you watched my video about the dome tour in Topeka? It's the Kansas State Capitol. We took the dome tour. You'll want to watch that video. The Italian Renaissance style rotunda features murals of St. Louis history. And that's what this video is about. St. Louis history. The old courthouse remained closed for renovations. The undergoing renovations of Gateway Arch National Park are part of the $380 million City Arch River Project. Most of the part dealing with the arch has been completed and is part of their beautiful new museum. And we'll take you there in a future video. This project is the largest public-private partnership in the history of the National Park Service. The courthouse portion is $24.5 million. When we were there before, they were working on the outside. Please subscribe to my channel. But back to these buildings, these old world buildings. Let's continue down the street. This is the Mississippi Valley Trust Company building. It's at the corner of Fourth and Pine. And then we found this Hilton. It's part of the historic Hotels of America. St. Louis History, a beautiful building. The eight-story Merchants Leclade building, named after the merger of two of its bank Tenants is an early example of St. Louis's tall fireproof office buildings. Completed in 1889, some of its offices contain fireplaces. By 1890, St. Louis's population grew to the fifth largest in the nation. St. Louis put its mark on American history. Notice the decorative terracotta relief panels with varied designs accenting the building. The security building, one of St. Louis's most significant 19th century office buildings, is the city's only remaining commercial structure designed by the renowned architectural firm of Peabody and Stearns. It was built in 1891, a year before Lewis Sullivan's pioneering Wainwright building on 7th Street. The security building represents an earlier classical revival style. One of the first two tall office buildings on 4th Street, the other being the Merchants Leclade building. The security building enhanced the street's prestige. By 1900, 4th Street was the city's financial center and was known simply as the street. Simply stunning, wouldn't you say? Have you subscribed yet? Thank you if you have. If not, please do. The first time I ever saw St. Louis, I could have bought it for $6 million, and it was the mistake of my life that I did not do it. Who is that? It was Samuel Clemens. And tell me in the comments below if you know who this famous man from Missouri is. I did a little short on him. You might want to watch that one also. At different times, Clemens lived on nearby Pine, Locust, and Chestnut Streets. All right, I'm going to bust the question. He later became became the greatest humorist in American literature. Mark Twain. Now let's go to the Economy Museum, Broadway and Locust and Forth. 
It's part of the Federal Reserve Bank, one of 12 in the nation. It's a free tour Monday through Friday, 9 to 3. We didn't go in because we've gone to a money museum in Chicago and didn't really have time. Wanted to get to Forest Park. There was so much to see there. But I do recommend that you take one of these tours if you have not. The Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. This is part of St. Louis history. William McChesney Martin Sr. is credited with helping to write the Federal Reserve Act in 1913, creating the Federal Reserve System. He headed the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis from its founding until 1941. St. Louis history right here. His son, William McChesney Martin Jr., worked here as a bank examiner in 1928. He moved to New York and at 31 became the first paid president of a New York Stock Exchange. Wow. Martin Jr. also chaired the Federal Reserve Board through five administrations, from Harry S. Truman to Richard M. Nixon. On controlling inflation, he said that the Federal Reserve's role was to take away the punch bowl when the party gets going. More fabulous buildings as we're walking back to the parking lot. We're parked around the corner from LeClade's Landing, the historic riverfront in old St. Louis. And boy, is this part of St. Louis history. But look at the time. No, that's not right. It's not 716. This clock doesn't work, but it certainly is beautiful, isn't it? And look at these guys. Um, I don't know what their names are. Maybe they're the, the Triple Fish Band. I don't know. Kind of interesting, wouldn't you say? Back to the car. And yes, we had to pay eight bucks to park. But we saw so much, including the Gateway Arch. And what's interesting about St. Louis, there are so many highways. We've got 44, 55, 64, and I-70. You can get just about anywhere from here. And as I mentioned, we needed to get going. I wanted to get to Forest Park and go to one of my favorite places there. It's a hidden gem in St. Louis. It's the Jewel Box. You'll want to watch that video. Flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell a friend about my channel. Travel across America with me. Leave a comment and give me a thumbs up.